there we go hello everyone oh i apologize um it seems the uh streaming password changed and i wasn't aware of it so again probably me not paying attention so all right welcome sorry we're starting late here we go um today we are going to surprise surprise sculpt another bust <laughs> this time this dude from uh, hand, hand doing, you know what? I need to change that actually. I need to uh, get his actual uh, full name here. Yes, no, maybe. Yeah, that's his Instagram handle. So, hey, what's up, Rad? So, um, another thing that, that, that kind of threw me for a loop is I, I switched back to my PC to stream with. Um, I was streaming on my um, my Mac M1. I love the experience, I loved it. I st I'm still gonna be using my Mac for video editing and things like that. But for um, for certain things, like any time I, I art, <laughs> it's uh, it was missing some, uh, you know, I found that, that not all software is made for Mac as it has been in the forever in the past. Um, I really, really hope with this whole M series that people will take notice and start to develop more software for for the Mac because I, I love the experience, but I can't have the experience if the experience doesn't exist. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so um, the uh, so I'm missing. Let's see, missing. I'm missing the. Um, the chat highlights that I had in my other stream because I was using a program called e Ecam Live, and now I'm back on OBS. So we have the old old chat feed up above us um, here, and yeah. So back to a, a regular stream, and I'm missing my over over the shoulder shot. I'll be getting that back into OBS um, in probably next week or something. So in the meantime, uh, we're kind of back to regular looking uh streaming layout which i'm totally fine with doesn't stop me from sculpting right <laughs> so do what you can do what can you do and hello everyone welcome to the stream i'm shane olson if you didn't know starting a little late but we're good we're getting we're going um and i'm going to right away i'm going to scale this guy up because i know we're going to be using some Sculptress Pro business. So we might as well do it now. <clears throat> How are you all doing today? Glad you're here. <laughs> Thanks, Neil. Okay. Starting with the ye old block out method. Hey, um, how, how do you set a reference image on the screen? I use something inside of ZBrush called Spotlight. You can also use a free program called Pure Ref if you want to do that. But I prefer using Spotlight. And you essentially um, click on Texture and then Import load your file oh there's his name okay load your file in here and then click on this button right here and it will open it up like this i'm going to delete this one and then you can move it and you can scale it and you can mess with the opacity back and forth it's really nice and you can also um i drop colors off of it using the keyboard letter c Actually, I do have a cool thing I can turn on. Let's see. Don't dare hide my... Here, just one second here. I'm going to turn this on and see if you guys like it. I have this, um, this cool key thing that I, that I got going on here. Let's see if it works. Is it going? Hmm... Not working. Hold on a second. Go. 
just doesn't want to go, I guess. Oh well. Oh, there it goes. Hey, there we are. All right, keys. Now you can see what keys I'm typing. <laughs> hey, Chris, how you doing? Excited for this one. Looks like the most deceptively simple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's got a lot of planes, a lot, a lot of shadows, lots of stuff going on. So, you know, I was going to take the, um, the guy that I've been working on the last two sessions and I was going to start posing him in different, uh, different expressions like I did with a dog a while back. But, you know, I was getting a little tired of that guy. So I'm going to move on for now and do a new one. And I feel like um, sticking with the same character for too long gets, gets kind of boring and I lose viewers. So, um, all right. <laughs> Neil, crack me up. All right. See if we keep this down. Um, Ibram, it is important, but in ZBrush, in particular, perspective doesn't work very well while you're working, but turn it on occasionally to check your work. Uh, for example, if I wanted to slice through this mesh, I would snap it to the side view like this, and then I can use this, um, the, the knife brush to cut through it. Okay. So, um, let's see, where are you, knife brush? This one. Okay. That was weird. Okay, so see how that, sl that slices through the mesh like this? See that slice? Okay, see how it's nice and clean and straight? If I have perspective turned on, and I try to slice that thing, um, I, it, it, it doesn't slice correctly. See that? It's not, it doesn't go straight through. So if I turn perspective off, it doesn't go straight through the object. It, it cuts it on an angle. So particularly in ZBrush, leave perspective off while you're working or you will uh, get weird, weird issues like that. Okay. So, um, I do this every time. I start with the uh, a, a sphere that represents the cranium. Okay. And then I start working it and start getting the, the planes pushed in there. And we do have symmetry turned on. Okay. And I like to use move infinite from the side so it moves all the way across okay this is oh there we go all right chat was like my my chat so this is how i view it you guys it looks like this um so it's nice and big i can read it but um it was highlighted like the whole thing was highlighted and it was giving me a i couldn't read it very well um okay so Do you like these, uh, do you like these characters down here so you can see what I'm pushing? Is that distracting? Hey, Christopher, how are you? Welcome to the stream. Okay. Yeah, no complaints from me. Okay, now I've done, I've been playing with something that I like to do uh, recently. I'm playing with an idea of cutting into this sphere with the knife brush um, to make a, a kind of a brow line. So I'm gonna hide this guy. I think you can do it with a, a hidden Uh, nope, I don't think you can. Okay, let me split, do a group split on this then. Um, group split. That will put each of these pieces in its own subtool, and then I can hide this one, and now I can do it. Well, I can also turn on transparency and do it that way. 
basically I just want to go about yeah about here I'll just go yoink oh let's see okay I think I got to come up into it like this double tap alt and then go like that there we go that's what I wanted hey Thomas how you doing you say a few words about the non-standard brushes that you have located above um Andre these uh, a lot of these brushes I've made myself, or I have, um, I have, uh, what am I trying to say? I've grabbed from brushes that already exist, and I've tweaked them to my liking, and I've made them. And I give them away for free. So, if you, um, if you want these brushes, you can just go over to 3D Character Workshop, this right here, 3D Character Workshop right here. Um, dot com and scroll about halfway down the page and you can grab the brushes and the my my starting file for free okay so now that i have that cut i'm actually going to turn off um shortcut shortcut coming osp um stark what are you talking are you talking about the 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 keys This, the keys right here um here let me it's it's, it's called um it's called key viz k-e-y-v-i-z i love it it's cool hey dennis welcome welcome okay let's um merge this back down so they're together again Now, I feel like that this method that I just did would work better if it was just one sphere and not two. Essentially, I'm just kind of... Yeah, it's, I, I really like the graphics of these keys. It's nice and it's, it just looks good. Looks really nice. Yeah, I might have cut it in too deep for this. But I think once we get everything rocking, it'll look it'll look pretty good. I think. I'm I'm hoping. <laughs> okay. You know, and I can also cut other things too, like the back of the or the jawline, the back of the head. It just depends on what I want to do, you know? Hey Leonard, how are you? Thanks. I like it. Okay, let's grab this appendage brush. make this more of a pill shape Let's scale it up a little too big a kind of a pencil neck this guy <laughs> all right let's get his uh, beautiful nose happening probably wondering why I don't start with this with a cube since this is so straight which I totally could um, but for some reason I I just start with spheres every time because of I, I love the organicness of it and the round it just comes with some some round qualities that feel more organic and less like CG I guess <laughs> I don't know And then I'll come in and um, like work the planes and things like that as I go. 
I might make this nose into two pieces actually. So I'm going to drag this down into the surface. And then flatten the top. So here's a secret, you guys. With this H polish brush, or any polish brush for that matter, even like the Trim Dynamic brush, uh, it looks like I messed up my symmetry. Um, what you can do is, um, if you're using it regularly, you can just kind of hit the surface of it and it'll start to flatten it out. You guys see that? It just starts to flatten things. And I like, I like using it that way. Uh, but you can hold down Alt, and it will actually bring the geometry up to meet the brush. So that's an alternative way to use it. And I do use it quite often that way. Okay. Yeah, I do like that knife cutout method. It's pretty nice. Chop, chop. <laughs> okay, so um, I do feel like his uh, his jaw is a bit too big, like too wide. I guess is what I'm trying to say. Bring that on in. And it's funny how low his his jaw hits before it turns. Hmm. Okay. And we can hit the sides again with H polish to hit those get those planes. Hey Armored, how you doing? Welcome to the stream. Thanks. Okay, so now let's get this uh this this bottom nose piece happening here. Again, why why am I using a sphere? Because I, again, I just love the the organic nature of a sphere. And then you can just hit hit it with the planes with the with the polish brush. Okay, let's let's you want to have enough material. So I'm kind of I'm looking at the tip of his nose. I'm like, okay, how far out is that? So when I hit it with the polish brush, it's gonna dial it in, as it were. And I almost want to um you know I will. I'm gonna split it off into its own subtool just for a second until I get it until I fix it better. Okay, let's see. Um, let's see. Split. Unmask points. Again, if you want this user interface, um, it comes with these primitive brushes that I use to block out my characters with, right here. And um, it's... I, I built it specifically for um, the, the blockout method that I use because I like using um, primitives that have quad tops. Um, like, uh, for example, this cylinder. I'll just pop over to the cylinder for a second and show you. It has a quad, quad cap instead of a pole. And it's al they're already pre-creased. And this one in particular is very specific because I don't have any um, spans going down the length of this. So it's really easy to make cones and things with it. Um, So anyway, uh, and, and just different resolutions of quad spheres right here. And then a regular cube, and then a cube that has been cut down all axes. And then an appendage brush. And this appendage brush is essentially just, <laughs> that looks funny, is just an elongated sphere that has some extra spans in it that I use for like fingers and um, arms, necks, legs, you know, whatever you want. Okay. So let's let's do this. Um, grab my H polish brush, 
and just start working those planes in. And you can go back and forth with move. Okay, see how like this has really nice planes now. And I can hit it going back and forth. Make because I want this the plane on the top to be as wide as the, the nose bridge, right? So I can just kind of polish it down to get wider. And connect, and then we'll hit the bottom. I love making planes. <laughs> it's just part of, part of the fun. Okay, let's see. Pull this in, and then where the nostrils are, they kind of. Well, let's finish bringing this plane down. Whoops. <laughs> Gotta have the right brush. Now I'm gonna use Alt to pull this up to my brush down here and then push it back down again. And then hit it underneath to make that nostril plane. And I feel like, whoops, I don't really make a folder. I'm gonna hit, I'm gonna just subdivide it once so I have a bit more geometry. And then delete the lower. There we go. Oh yes, the um, Zebra Summit has been announced. It's uh, November 13th through the 16th. They are doing an, one, one more um, virtual event, which is uh, probably, probably smart of them. <laughs> I mean, I really, I really miss my my ZBrush friends, and I want to see them in person a lot, but uh, just to make sure, one final, one final push to make sure we're, we're through this and, you know, when I say this, I mean the, the COVID thing, you know, I just did the COVID thing not too long ago. And I just realized I'm not coughing anymore. <laughs> so there we go. Hey, Jordy, you're just starting to use ZBrush today. Wow. Well, uh, welcome. <laughs> okay, I think we got it a little bit large now that I have it in place. But I do want to combine these back together. Let's merge this down. There we go. Hold on one second. Now you can see what I'm typing. <laughs> the password to, to stream had changed and I was asking Ashley. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm in a panic. What's the password? I better not type a password when you can see my keys, right? <laughs> uh. You saw, you noticed what earlier, Leonard? Hey Ian, how are you doing? How are you doing? Oh, or that I wasn't coughing. <laughs> Any reason I'm not, I'm, you know what? No, I honestly, I think just because I wanna see the planes a little more clearly, this specific guy is like Mr. Mr. Plains. Hey Shady, how you doing? Welcome to the stream. From Pakistan. I love that people from all over the world can can join and that's the beauty of I mean, the internet has brought a lot of a lot of bad things, but a lot of good things with it at the same time and I feel like that's one of them. Yeah, you're right. And uh, 
armored attacker sorry your name is kind of dark blue um the uh yeah when you're using the knife brush it really um you know honestly that's probably why i turned it off because you'll get you get these chunky monkeys along the edge here and that's because it's trying to subdivide triangles um you don't want to subdivide triangles yeah help me help you help your friends from subdividing triangles <laughs> Yeah, well, I'm looking at this. This is what I see. This is my little chat window. You can see your name is like a dark blue against a dark blue. So I don't, I don't know why it's dark blue. It's weird. Hey, David, thank you so much. That yeah, makes me squint like an old man. What? What are you saying? <laughs> okay. Now I feel like his jaw needs to come a lot narrower down. Yep, chunky monkeys. That's it. Let's bring that in. That's feeling better. Dun, dun, dun. It's it's a little bit hard to read with these shadows, but it also at the same time it's quite clear. So <laughs> Hey Warrior, how you doing? Uh yeah, so if you guys are just joining me. And you've watched my streams in the past. For a little for a little while, I've been streaming on my um, my Apple Mac M1, which I've thoroughly enjoyed. It has uh, some software, streaming software called Ecam Live, which I really really like. It's nice. Um, it gave me the ability to highlight chat. Um, I I added the overhead cam. That's not really an Ecam thing. That's more of a just adding an overhead cam, and um, I, I liked it a lot, but the the problem was um, not enough people develop for, for Mac. It's just like it's been for the longest time, you know. Um, I'm really hoping that with the advent of the M1 and it doing so so well and, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a strong machine. So I'm really hoping that more people will develop on it. But I've been trying to do, you know, use some certain plugins and different things, and it's just... I keep hitting a wall because it's not available, you know. For example, there's a ZBrush plugin that uh, allows you to work with a new iPad program called Cozy Blanket that I really enjoy, and I can't use the plugin on Mac. So yes, Leonard, um, I still have my Mac hooked up. I'm, I'm still running a double machine. Um, so yeah, don't be don't be too too scared. But um, the uh, what am I trying to say? Um, the the art side. So the Cintiq, I can only have it either hooked up to my Mac or my PC unless I have a switcher. I don't really want to have a switcher, so um, I just I just replugged it back into um, back into the my PC to do my streaming with. I still do my video editing and things like that over on the Mac. So anyway, hey Vince, please don't uh, spam the chat. But welcome to the stream. Okay, let's see here. Let's move this neck in a little bit here. Better connection. You can't have topological and have a mask at the same time because Topological is topological masking. So if you're running both and you find if you have topological turned on and you go to grab something and it doesn't move, then that's why because you're you're fighting it. You're having it's trying to go, well, what mask do you want? Pick a side. Uh, ZBrush not work properly with a graphic. Are you talking about a graphics tablet or is there a certain brand? Because when I've used, I used um, graphics tablets for 15 years of my career and they worked just fine. So if you're having troubles with it, um, you might want to 
send a support ticket to uh, Maxon, maybe. I'm not sure. Been running two different operating systems for years. Yeah, <laughs> get the best of both worlds, right? V, V, V2. I'm not familiar with that one. I've only used Wacom products. And I've heard some other um, low cost ones like the Huion. And I still need to try, I still need to try this one. This one by Z Zents Labs that they sent to me to review. I still need to review this. I apologize Zents Labs for not reviewing this, but I want to show it. Here it is. And it's still in the cellophane. That's why it's really <laughs> reflective, but it's super cool. I need to review that thing. Yeah, I've, heard, I've only heard good things. There are some good reviews on YouTube. Uh, if you go check them out. I need to get my review out there. It's just kind of a hassle to, because uh, I have a Cintiq that takes up a good, I don't know, 25% of my desk. So it's hard to, it's hard to uh, get it going. It's costly to buy a graphics tablet in Pakistan. I, I understand. I wish I, I wish I had the answer to that. But I'm glad you're, I'm glad you're persevering and, and trying to uh, sculpt even though it's difficult. And my advice is just... As, as long as you have a sculpting tablet, that's that's good. It doesn't need to be a name brand or anything. It just needs to work. Don't try not to sculpt with a with a mouse. <laughs> oh, funny. Funny because it's true. Okay. I feel like his ear is a little rounder this time. I like that shape. Okay. Let's get his eyeballs in there. Ah. Let's reset this gizmo. Get two hundred dollars it cost. I don't know what the equivalent of Pakistan rupees. Due to inflation, it might cost more. Ugh. Hey, Wilberth, how are you? Oh, thanks so much. Yeah, that's why I chose it. It's really fun. Are you thinking of doing a redesign of your studio? Eventually, yeah, I'd like to. Why does it do that? <clears throat> um, but again, Leonard, like I said, um, it's it's mainly due to the just not enough software. Ma one of the main reasons I moved to the Mac was that the Ecamm Live was only available on the Mac. And, you know, it's interconnectivity with everything. Apple, of course, like phones and iPads and things. Hey, Lethal. Yeah, yeah. You want to... Um, I, I try and ask the 
original concept artist is is you know whenever I go to sculpt something. Sometimes I'm in a panic and I just find something to like today. Um, so I do I still reach out to the person, but sometimes they don't answer me in time. So I just make sure that I give proper credit and link back to like Ian you'll or uh, sorry uh, Neil you'll see posting the link to the concept artist occasionally in the feed because I want some traffic to go back to the concept artist to make sure everybody knows who this is it would be a disservice to show some concept art and not give proper credit and I'm not selling this I'm just teaching you how to how to sculpt it but if you're going to put it in your portfolio, definitely make sure you have um, proper permission. Okay, I need some... <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> oh, man, it's the only time I've coughed in a few days. Ah. All right, now to try and fix this. See the symmetry issue of this nose? See how it got off symmetry right here? Um, I know if I do a mirror and weld right now, it's going to, it's going to du duplicate that, that line down the middle. So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mirror it. Make sure local symmetry is turned off for a moment. And then I'll mirror this, boom. And then I will do a mirror and weld, and that will fix the symmetry, but not all the symmetry. See how it created some issues down here now. What are my thoughts about Pakistan? I really don't have many thoughts about it, um, other than I just, I'm, it makes me sad that you don't have the same access to things that I do. Just gonna push this over to the right and do another mirror and weld. And that's how you fix symmetry. Same thing with this mouth right here. There you go. Yep, push all the junk to the right. <laughs> yep. Um, how can I master the move brush? Um, just think think of it like uh, think of it like regular clay, and you're just nudging things around, and then it'll work it'll work well for you. Okay, I am going to um, flood fill this with uh, tessimation. So what I do is, that's what this slider is on my user interface, which if you'd like this user interface, I give it away for free over on my website, 3dcharacterworkshop.com, you can go grab it. And what this does is, um, it basically, see if I move this slider to the left, it flood fills everything. Now, I, it also tries to keep like the facets and things. So I'm gonna undo that, maybe subdivide it a couple times but I might do a crease because I want to keep this edge right here. So let's do a uh, crease by normals or crease by polygroup. And then it'll hold on to that crease and not look funky monkey. See that? Looks better. And then we can apply it and then flood fill it. No, it won't work because I have subdivision levels. Get rid of those. There we go. Okay, let's try this one more time. Maybe not that much. There we go. Okay, that's better. Um, how do you make a hole for an earring? I would use live booleans. Unless you're using low poly, then you can use uh, Q mesh with um, the Z modeler brush, but 
live boolean is the way to go so i would look up um tutorials on on how to use live boolean you know that's the best way it's really good really good all right Hmm. Do I ever retopologize a hard surface object? If so, how do you go about cylindrical shape retopology? Um, I have, but that's that's a a, a pretty big question <laughs> that it's hard to just like tell you the answer to without um like giving a demonstration on how to do it. Okay. I'm trying to figure out these eyes. I feel like this nose is a bit too deep, so I'm gonna pull this whole section forward. Let's see, I wanna keep well. Yeah, let's just do it. And I can use um, this move infinite, which will shoot it all the way through to the other side, which is great. Um, will I be in this year's sculpt off? I don't know yet. Yeah, that is the that's the that's just Tessimate. This slider is Tessimate, which you can find in um, Geometry Tessimate. It's just this slider right here. It's the same slider. And basically that just flood fills your entire character with uh, dynamic topology. I'm gonna pull this back, whoops. Um, here's a little trick. If you want to um, like isolate two poly groups at once, um, just click on a shared vertice, so a shared uh, point. See, I can click on this point right here in between the pink and the green and hold down Control plus Shift. Hey, you can see my what I'm holding down. And I click it and it'll isolate those two together. And then I can mask it and then invert this because what I wanna do is I wanna pull this um, this eye cavity backwards in space without pulling the, the the cheek portion. Yeah, something like that. Who's Uncle Tony? Does the stream say my name is Tony? <laughs> I'm Shane, by the way. Um, I did. Um, hey, Stephen, how are you? I did compete in the sculpt off. Oh, thank you. Symmetry's off. Thank you. Goodness sakes, Christopher, you caught me. Thank you. Um, let's mirror it over. Easy fix. Look at that. Rick. Mirror and weld. Boom. Done. Thank you. Let's turn my symmetry back on. Been using ZBrush for, what, almost 15 years? I just found out about the shared vertices trick. <laughs> you know what? ZBrush is absolutely chock full of hidden gems, is what I call them. Hidden gems. It's like, the more you use it, the more you can mine down and find hidden gems. Um, what is the max number of polys you should usually reach when sculpting stylized characters before remeshing? Um, Andreas, I'm going to give you kind of a jerk answer to that. Um, bec and, and the jerk answer is don't focus on, on the density of, or don't, don't focus on 
that. Don't, don't focus on the max number of polys. Um, it's more about what your machine can handle, and it's also about the actual density of the mesh, not the poly count itself. So for example, I will stick to a mesh that looks like this when I'm working. I'm not, I'm not checking this number up here. Does that make sense? Like I, this is my, what I call a medium density, a density that I like to work with, with uh, Sculptors Pro. Um, if I go any more dense than this, then it's gonna start to slow down and I'll have some trouble sculpting. But if I need more detail, I will turn up the density like in eyelids and things like that. But for the most part, this is enough. This is enough. And you do kind of have to overlook uh, a bit of chunkiness here when you're using Sculptors Pro. Um, but and if, if, you're, if you have enough or too much detail that your machine starts slowing down, that's when you, you can take a moment to decimate. But until then, you know, just kind of ignore it. That's my, that's my advice. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, Andres, yep, yep, yep. So I started using ZBrush, um, you know, not too unlike uh, Streamworks there about 15 years ago. And um, coming from Maya, I think, I think coming from Maya or 3D Studio Max or, or a, a 3D modeling program like that, it's, it's harder to learn ZBrush because your expectations are a, a certain way and it's not digital sculpting, it's, it's modeling, right? It's box modeling. Um, so you kind of have to change your whole mindset when you get into sculpting with ZBrush because it, it, it's more like clay than it is like Maya. Um, so you have to kind of let that go and you'll, you'll get it to be more like Maya towards the end where you do your retopology and make it an, an, an actual mesh that something like Maya could handle you know, to, before you push it over there. But while you're in ZBrush, ZBrush can handle millions and millions of polygons. And I mean, they even, they even have a high resolution so you can go even deeper with your resolution. So you can do pores and things like that, you know. Um, and I, with, with stylized characters, I just don't take it that far. So I never, I never really worry about it. So, um, let's see. Um, do you have any advice for dynameshing something like a blocked out closed hand without the fingers fusing? Yes, my recommendation is don't use dynamesh. Um, I hardly ever use dynamesh anymore. When dynamesh first came out, I used it a ton. But ever since I discovered Sculptress Pro and I discovered Remesh by Union, that's the key, Remesh by Union, when I discovered that, um, I've, never kind of, I've never looked back. Um, remesh by Union is a way to fuse meshes together without using Dynamesh. And, you'll, and so you can have fingers um, very, very close to one another and it will, not it will not bridge the gap between them like Dynamesh will. And it won't get rid of your creases like your, I'll, I'll show you here in a second. <laughs> yeah, and you don't lose your form, you don't lose your volume, you don't lose your, uh, like your, your, this right here, the cuts. So, for example, and this is what I do, I'm giving you a little too much information right now, but I don't care. I'm going to tell you. You guys are here, you're, you're hanging out with me, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you the secret, right? When you are um, going to send your character to a 3D print, rather than combining everything and dynameshing everything and then trying to reproject that detail back onto your character. Do all your decimation beforehand, then merge it together, then do a remesh by union and your characters will look absolutely tight, 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 tight. It will not lose anything. It will not melt your, your model. So there you go. Here's my advice for the day for free. <laughs> All right, I do want these planes of the eyes.
There we go. That's incredible intel. I've actually been overworking my brain trying to figure out a good way to solve that issue. Yep, you're welcome. <laughs> and actually, um, Remesh by Union will handle. You don't have to decimate beforehand. It's just better uh, practice to do so because uh, ZBrush will crash sometimes. Um, not often, but it'll, it'll handle some pretty big meshes. But just be, just be aware of that. Going too fast. I don't want it to go that fast. Um, hello, boss. Can you make a full tutorial of creating a character for games animations from sculpting retop? Um, your wish has come true. I, I don't teach rigging, but I teach everything else. And you can find it over on my, uh, my webpage. It's called 3D Character Workshop. And I teach you go, how to go from nothing all the way to a game-ready character. Okay. Um, is this stream going to be anywhere online? Yeah, yeah, it's on, um, I believe it's still, maybe, uh, Neil, you can correct me if I'm wrong, I think it's still on the ZBrush Live Pixelogic YouTube channel. I don't, I don't know that they've changed the name to Maxon or anything yet, but it's, it'll show up there. And you can just do, do a search for my name, it's Shane Olson ZBrush. I mean, that's not my name, <laughs> Shane Olson ZBrush is not my name, but... Um, yeah, you can do a search for Shane Olson ZBrush and, uh, all of my past streams should come up for you. This is, I'm, I'm almost reaching like 200 streams or something like that. I don't know where we're at on how many I've done. I've done one or two. Okay, let's see. This kind of has a weaker chin than this. Sir ZBrush the Great. <laughs> mm, I kind of want that. All right. Yes, this, uh, this concept is done by Ido. Um, I don't know if that's how you pronounce his name, but please go give him a, a, a follow and a like. He does phenomenal stuff. Whoops. <laughs> that's another secret I just showed you. Um, full of secrets today. So if you use the uh, the H polish brush, you can go over two objects and just smooth them together, just polish them together. I should have a bicentennial. <laughs> Could you be my quality assure for a university project? Um, yeah, so I, well, I do a, I have an acceleration program that is more expensive than my regular program where I do weekly live coaching calls. Um, if you're interested in that, you can send me uh, an email at Shane Olson at 3dcharacterworkshop.com. Um, it's quite, quite a lot more than my regular course, just so you are aware. And uh, that's where I give, that's where I give feedback. And I also give feedback in my course. It's just not a, a weekly coaching call, you know? Okay, I want his nose pointy. Ooh. <laughs> Thank you, AccuCurve. Curve. 
Hey, uh, Joe, Joe, please don't ask that here. You're on the, uh, you're on the official Maxon ZBrush live streaming channel. So that's the last place you want to ask for that. And I'm, I apologize that you can't afford it. I really wish I could help out, but that's not the way to go about it. That's a little too pointy, I'm not gonna lie. That's a little too much, too much. Let's roll it on back. This one a little pointy. All right. Just polish this down a little bit more. All right. Let's get him some, we can block out some stuff like his eyebrows and his little, and his hair and things like that. Um, and one other thing that's really good about um, doing the remesh by union method is that you can do uh, details in pieces before you stitch them together, which means everything remains editable for a longer amount of time, which is a beautiful thing. So I can go in and I can put the detail in his ear right now. Something like this. Hey, Jomar. Um, yeah, this will... So basically, I blocked it out with a sphere. Um, and then I polished it down with H-Polish. And if you want to watch exactly how I did it, the replay will be up on the ZBrush Live YouTube channel later on. Okay, I'll turn on Sculptress now. Crank this down a little bit. And then test changing this density. Go a little bit higher. There we go. And then we can smooth it down and and I don't I'm actually okay with it going over the density going over here because when I stitch it you want to have even geometry where you stitch it just comes comes out with a better stitching Thanks so much. Yes, there is ZBrush Core Mini that is free, and it does have, I believe it has Sculptress Pro abilities in built in. Correct me if I'm wrong. I haven't used it enough. Thanks for uh, reminding me of that. It's important. What kind of song do I listen to while I'm sculpting? Well, right now I'm listening to Exorcism by Gunship. <laughs> um, I like electronic music. That's my, that's my jam. Either from the 80s or current, you know. I 
think it's called, uh, what is it called? Synth something. Retro synth. I like retro synth. Kind of sounds like 80s. Not quite as good as 80s, but it's nice and rhythmic and it's good background music that doesn't take too much of my attention. <laughs> Nathan, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> okay. Synthwave, thank you, Wilbur. There you go, Synthwave. What did I call it? Retro Synth? <laughs> I don't know what I listen to. Okay. I'm just using the topology brush. There we go. Split hidden. Or split unmasked points, rather. Yeah, one of my favorite synthwave bands is um, Mid The Midnight. Not, not Midnight Oil, although I like those guys too, but it's called The Midnight. They just released a new album that's super good. What was the brush you used for share edges? I'm not, I don't understand what that means, share edges. Are you talking about what I use for the eyebrows? Oh, sharp edges and the hard polish brush. Yeah, so this is my pinch brush. Um, it's also, you can find it, it's called Ma Cut. That's the original brush it came from. It was, it was uh, made by Malicus the Black. Sharp edges, yeah. Um, so I used a combination of H polish, this one, and the pinch brush, pinch brush. And you can get these brushes for free. I give them away for free over on my website, um, 3dcharacterworkshop.com. Go check it out, check it out. All right, so I'm gonna subdivide this down, add some thickness, more, get rid of the creasing. More thickness. Oh, too much. Too much. Come on, slider. What are you doing to me? It does not want to go. Okay. That's really weird. So when when you learn a when you learn sculpting software or modeling software, there are two things that you need to learn. There's an artistic side and a technical side. So the technical side, you're actually just learning how to use the software, right? Like what buttons to push, what things to pull. But then there's the artistic side, and the artistic side is the proportions, the measurements, the um, you know, everything art, art related. And I don't know if you guys notice this or not, but I don't really talk about the art side of it too much. I, I reserve that for my course. Um, I talk about, because this is the ZBrush live channel, I demonstrate the software. So I'm always demonstrating the technical, like how you technically do these things. So if you're wanting to learn the artistic side of it, 
you can check out my um, my online course 3d character workshop where I talk about the artistic side and what's nice about the art side of things is the art stays with you and what does that mean that means you don't you don't really lose it so you can keep the same techniques wherever you go and whatever you sculpt with you could sculpt with dirt or ice or clay or whatever it is not really dirt <laughs> i guess you can carve hard clay dirt but um like ice or whatever you want you know do you think mobile app sculpting software would be great addition absolutely yeah i i like getting started like on my ipad with one of those other software and then bring it into zbrush and f because then i can sit on my couch and do it you know super cool gosh dang it come on slider you can do it Is there a difference between using your polish brush and using alts plus your field brush? Um, so this polish brush, sorry, this polish brush, um, it's more subtle and it actually brings things to a plane and each polish will actually push things in. Let me save this. I can't believe I hadn't saved it yet. Um, let's call this. see I do I can't spell <laughs> whatever <laughs> I name it stupid okay what was the question what did I miss oh best course ever thanks Ivan <laughs> Yeah, it's sculpted in some dirt. I like how his eyebrows are sitting right on the bottom of his brows. Okay, let's get some let's get some color going. I, I'm one of those people that like to get color early. And if you want to uh, an eye drop color off of your spotlight image you have to make sure the ring is showing this spotlight ring otherwise you're eye dropping the gray background okay so if it's if you're hitting the the keyboard letter c see this this c if you're hitting that um you're just going to grab the background and you don't have to click you can just hover and it'll change colors wherever you hover so i'm going to grab this Select his skin, fill it. I mean, his eyes are quite, quite dark. Let's see. Let's see if I can grab. I'm gonna zoom on in. Let's see if I can grab a color from like right here. Because his eyes are in shadow, you don't want to grab the shadow. You want to grab the the most neutral color you can. Do you, what, do you, I take suggestions? I would love you to make Scooby-Doo. Um, I, I usually stay away from licensed models because they're licensed and I don't have the, I don't have the permission to sculpt their models. Sometimes, you know, um, yeah, so I usually will, will sculpt designs from other concept artists where they're they don't belong to anything in particular okay let's see okay let's block out his hair get that going Oh, someone asked earlier about getting the reference image in the ZBrush also remember to turn off the spotlight projection Yep, so thanks, Neil. Um, I actually have it built into my uh, user interface, this pop-up menu. 
and I have it turned off by default, but this spotlight project, you can find it under brush samples spotlight projection. So it's under brush and then samples and spotlight projection right there. You want that to be turned off or else your brushes won't work. Okay, just make sure you get that. You do that. Okay. I'm gonna mess with this a little bit more and get him, give him some eyelids here in a second. Let's do his, um, let's block out his hair. Where, how are we looking? Okay. <laughs> his forehead is rather, rather round, isn't it? <laughs> I need to slope that back a little better. Okay, eh, maybe not. It's kind of fun to have a square head. <laughs> Come on, split these off. Where did it, what did I push? Z remesher. Oh, okay. <laughs> On your website, when I try to grab the free brush and push sign, it says this should be a valid email. Yeah, make sure it's it's got to be a valid email. It has to say at something dot com or whatever. It has to be legit. Okay. <laughs> I love his little hair things. Like zoop. And then for this, I can drag it down. And then I'll start to run out of geometry and I can just Z remesh it when I'm ready. Hey Ivan, how are you? Welcome to the stream. Okay. Let's see, I'm just gonna turn this all the way down and hit Z remesh. There we go. Then we can turn on snake hook, accu curve. Try and twist this around. I'm gonna subdivide this once. A little too light. Um how much should my move brush size be relative to my model for major changes? Uh, you, it's, yeah, that's, that's a really hard question to answer because it changes all the time and it depends on what you're trying to do. Nathan, I don't think I have. <laughs> Something like this. Because honestly, I, I, I'm, I've been an instructor, this is what I do full time. So I, I want to encourage people 
you know, that are just starting out. So I don't want to, I don't want to grab somebody's early beginner work and like say, yeah, I'm just not that guy, I guess. <laughs> I think this guy rocks the center part. What do you think I'll part his hair? I think it's, yeah, I think it's the center part for sure. Hey, Carlos, thank you so much. Appreciate it. All right, I'm just pushing this around. Usually I'd take a whole entire sphere and just block it out and cut, cut in the parts. But for this one, I think I'm just gonna scoot, scoot it together and make the part in the first place. I feel like I approach every single character in a different way depending on the needs. Just out of curiosity. Oh, it did? Oh, no way. I'm just out of curiosity. How many of you are interested in 3D printing versus game characters? Or I, sh I should say collect toys, collectibles, 3D printing versus versus games. This is so good. Do you have a name for him? I don't. <laughs> Both, but interested in 3D printing, toys and collectibles, 3D printing. <laughs> yeah, printing your own scopes is the best. Hey, McBobbles, how are you, man? Uh, the big difference, well, there's a lot of difference, actually. There's quite a bit of difference. We're interested in game characters, but totally do 3d printing depending on what the final goal for the 3d printing for example i'd like to learn it to sculpt and produce my own stop motion puppets nice making toys is also appealing i uh, yeah but you still yeah you still you, you would still pose your character even though it wasn't rigged sculpting for 3d printing thanks christopher Thanks all your, for your, all your answers. Sorry, I'm a newbie. If we're going to transfer the models from Maya for retopology, why do we z use ZBrush at all? Um, so for this, I, I, I'm, I'm just going to tell you right now, I used Maya and traditional box modeling, as it were called. I used that for 15 years. I would say 15 years off and on. So I know Maya very, very well, and I was in the gaming industry for... 20, 20 plus years, give or take. Um, and when ZBrush came around, it basically made it so I didn't have to focus on the topology and what the character looked like at the same time. I could, I could get the technical part out of the way and just focus on the art, right? That's, that's what ZBrush is good for. You're digitally sculpting. You're not really doing traditional box modeling like you would in Maya. 
for example. So when you're all done, you're going to do the retopology. That's when you care about the, the technology and you know how good it's going to deform. But while you're while you're doing the art, you're not caring about it, and I love it. Wouldn't change it for the world. And that's why I ask with um, with three D printing. I've I've been debating. Um, because my course currently is both gaming and and 3D printing. Not as much 3D printing. It's more kind of about gaming characters. But I just, I love, as you can tell behind me, I've printed all these myself with my own stuff. And it's so awesome to hold it in my hand. So I just, I was just thinking about focusing on 3D printing moving forward and less about game characters. And I just wondered, you know, just kind of take a, for for those of you here, I was just wondering, like, if I took a quick poll as far as, like, how many of you are interested in that or not. <laughs> 3D printing is a game. <coughs> yes, resin printing, for sure. So use ZBrush so you can get a level of detail that will be baked to the low poly. Yep, exactly. Um, I wish I could get a 3D printer. It seems too unsafe. To do in a small apartment that's true but you can get some pretty small printers and if you have like a deck or something you can put it out on the deck or in the maybe in the garage if you have a like a i honestly don't know where you would just if you could open up a window and and a, use a fan and kind of blast the the stuff out the window i think it'd be okay like i have an any cubic photon that's really really small i was gonna Maybe I could grab it and show you if you're interested. It's not very big at all. And you can print like D&D &D minis and things like that on it. And it there the quality is very, very nice. Okay, let me. I just love 3D printing so much. And I want to turn. I was just thinking about turning that passion into the the thing that I focus on, you know? kind of like I said move away from the game so much you have to use shapeways and that's a perfectly fine way to go you know using a, a printing service to, to print your stuff out rather than doing it yourself then you don't have to invest in a printer you don't have to get all messy and and worry about all that that stuff you know but for me I kind of like I like the hands-on part of it and I'm also going to get um, I also want to get into the painting side of things because I'm I'm a nerd, geek, whatever you want to call it. I, I get into uh, 3D painting my my D and D minis and things like that. So I I really want to get into like painting all this stuff that I have printed behind me and then filming it and talking about how to how to do it. You know, be fun. I think. Yeah, several several years ago, I worked on, uh, a lot of you already know this, but those of you who don't, I worked on Disney Infinity. And uh, that's what introduced me to the, because I was, I was in games for most of my career until Disney Infinity, where I got introduced to making toys, and um, then I kind of never looked back. <laughs> Oh, looks like I drew this on here. I didn't mean to. I, sp I print all the time. I just spent an entire day with a buddy explaining how to set his models on the print bed. Awesome. I love it. Love it, love it. I love the whole... Um, Figuring out, it's kind of a puzzle, like how to key things together, um, how to best fit it on the print bed, how to uh, best support all of your pieces and parts. I love all that part, you know, it's just, I, I would rather do that than try and figure out like how to lay out my UVs or how to do the retopology and stuff. So it's still technical, but just in a different way, you know.
All right, let's get his sideburns in. Disney Finney's art style I'm trying to learn right now. Those models look amazing. Thank you so much. Yeah, the team the team did a phenomenal job. Oh really, Leonard? That's awesome. Yeah, I'd love to see it. That thing's amazing. Hey, Sir Delicia, welcome, welcome. How are you? This is rather low. Okay. You know, I, I have to say one of my favorite parts about the whole 3D printing aspect is when students students send me either the actual 3D print or the STL file for me to print of their work. That's so it's so super rewarding to me and blows my mind. The sirloin stream's been very helpful. Awesome. Yeah, so the sirloin stream that is an entire game character workflow from start to finish. And it's part of my course if you guys are interested. I can show you a preview if you'd like to see it. Um, what Wilbur's talking about. So this is what it looks like inside the course. This is my 3D character workshop. It's an online workshop. And uh, I have this these weekly challenges, uh, community, live Q&A replays, um, this is the, the original 3D character workshop I released five years ago. This uses the Dynamesh method. And this is uh, Sirloin, the, the bonus that I was talking about. Um, so if you click into here, you can see it starts with a block out and goes all the way, including hard surface, doing the sword, um, poly painting, retopology, all the way UVs in Maya. Um, to uh, Substance Painter right here with my buddy uh, Brendan, who is also a live streamer on this channel. See, there's Brendan right there. We're talking about doing the, the textures in Substance. Um, Brendan's amazing. He works at Crystal Dynamics, and he is also into printing and painting miniature figures. So, uh, yeah. So if you're interested in, in, in this and hopping in and taking a look that is what it looks like love to have you just going to kind of pull this over and then i got to put that overlapping piece in there i like how it kind of covers up everything i think i'm going to do that an appendage brush though Let's turn local symmetry back on. Um, I have a private Discord for my students, yes. So as part of uh, signing up for the course, you get invited to the private Discord, but I do not have a public one. Um, so it's important to have UVs on a sub tool or export it to Substance Painter. Um, Houdini, that's that's a whole like I said, that's a whole um, that's a whole pipeline that like you have you have to retopologize it, UV it, and then put textures on it to put it into a game. And that is a whole technical process. Yes, it takes a long time to uh, make a character game ready after you've sculpted it.
for example, that sirloin is, I think it's 66 hours of footage, live, live footage. I sculpted it live while I was explaining what I was doing. This is interesting, it kind of swoops up. Just gonna tux in back here. Time we got twenty minutes. Okay. Uh, could be to push in two directions, 3D printing and also game characters into rigging. Um, yeah, Michael, I just, I need to focus on one or the other because otherwise it's just too much. Um, that's kind of what it is right now. Yeah, I cover both, I, I cover game characters more um, than I do 3D printing, but like I said, I'm in love with 3D printing more, so I want to teach it more. And I kind of want to move away from game characters. I've, I've done that, I've done rigging. Um, it's not really my passion. So I don't, it's, it's harder to teach when you're not as passionate about it. And I really, yeah, I don't want to teach rigging very much. It's not my thing, <laughs> even though I've done it professionally. Yeah, there's whole courses that just talk about rigging. It's uh, and, and it's a whole, uh, you can get a job just being a, just rigging characters. Hey, Alec, how are you? Mm. All right. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of warm. I want to warm him up. I feel like I could stretch his face out longer and stretch his nose out. Long. I don't know. We'll see. His forehead is a bit big. Uh, not that. How can I enable wireframe for all subtools? Um, I, you have to put them all in the same subtool. So you can't you can't show the wireframe on everything unless you combine them all into one, as far as I know. <laughs> it looks like I didn't fill in the color on his hair. You already showed retopo texturing rig for one character. I don't show how to rig, Sammy. I only show how to retop out UV and texture, not rigging. Do you think you could demonstrate a quick use for mesh project that you find yourself using it most for? Hey, Kimmy. Um, mesh project? I, I only use that in very, very specific instances. Let me see. Um, and it's just basically to match one mesh to another mesh. And it's usually with text. So I'll put text and I want that text to match the surface curvature of a sphere or something like that. I'll, I'll, I'll use, uh, I'll use that. But I don't, I, I barely, I barely, barely use that brush and I have to look up how to use it every single time. <laughs> That's how often I use it. Okay, let's see, uh, color, airbrush, there we go. Did I use Tessimate to add the details? I did, you can see it, right there, Sculptors Pro, that's the key. I'm just going to kind of warm them up a little bit through here. 
No, it's not exactly like that in the concept, but it'll work. And uh, nope, it's not joined, not yet. Still separate. Yeah, you can go so far with uh, with blockouts. Get rid of that line in the middle. <laughs> Kimmy, thanks. <laughs> uh, make me laugh. All right. Let's duplicate these eyes. Scale them up a little bit. Fill it with a color. And these will be the eyelids. I'm going to use the clip curve brush rather than the knife brush. And this will just squish the geometry up. Like that. Everything on the, the faded side of that dotted line, it'll take that and squish it up to the dotted line. Works pretty well. <laughs> Look it up in the Pavlopedia. There you go. <laughs> yeah, it does need more volume. Thanks, Kimmy. Yep, you're right. Especially these little, these little things right here. It needs to be a lot more volume for sure. So it's not the same thing as using Projection Master. No, it's not. Okay, let's get let's get these lips made. I can do them now. It's fine. I'm not going to make a mouth cavity on this guy. Usually I, I do just to get better a better line between the lips, but this guy's lips are so small and specific that I'm just going to do it with masking. Uh, let's do mask lasso maybe. All right. I'm going to add a little detail to these lips. You can also um, hide the mask by pushing Control H. So the mask is still there. It's inverted. Now I'm going to work on pulling out the bottom lip. Instead of pulling it out, I want to inflate it out using this cloth brush. Let's hold Alt. Hey, Daryl, how are you? It's been a while. How have you been? Um, super late to the stream, but did you say you might be adding more 3D printing videos to the workshop? Um, yes and no. I'm actually thinking about just doing a whole new thing beyond the workshop. Like... kind of uh, letting the workshop run its course and doing a whole new thing. Turn off Sculptress. That focuses on 3D printing. <laughs> Kimmy, yeah. I haven't got there yet. I've only worked on this for, uh, in 10 more minutes, it will be two hours. So that's just a matter of, I haven't got there yet. Ha <laughs> ha. 
<laughs> another two hours. I hope it doesn't take another two hours. No, I'm about to wrap it up. It's been great enjoying working in the industry. Thanks to you. Awesome, Daryl. That's so sweet of you to say. Awesome. Well, I can't check it. Wait to check it out. I would be on board. Not as soon as it releases. Awesome. Yeah, I knew you were kidding, Kimmy. It's cool. It's all good. Super inspiring how you're super focused on only doing what you're passionate about. Yeah, that's, Anisha, that's that's kind of the, the thing I was just kind of questioning. It's like, do, do I absolutely need to focus on characters in order to... Um, well, for lack of a better term, make a living. Um, because that's what I do full time is I teach. I teach this stuff. I have for the last five years and it's been awesome and I don't want to lose it. <laughs> my sales have, just to be completely transparent, my sales have um, waned a little bit with the economy, the inflation and you know, all the, all the whatevers. So I'm just, I'm just trying to think of other way to pivot and deliver to the students even more better. I like that mouth it turned out all right but I think it's a little more pursed than that. <laughs> I'd love to support the 3D printing process, especially if it's similar to his previous workshop. Yeah, it will be, but it will be more community focused and less um, pre-recorded videos. I really, I really love that idea. So we're kind of printing and sharing together, not just not just me spouting off what I know, you know what I mean? Hey Quint, how you doing? Um, uh, will I be at Lightbox next month? I wish. I wish, I wish, I wish. How are you? <laughs> are you going to be there? I assume so, since you're asking. <laughs> Guy. I like I like him without a nose. <laughs> Looks pretty funny. He's got a little tr oh that little triangle thing. It's on both sides, isn't it? The community is one of the best things about the workshop. Thanks, Brad. Yeah, so Brad's I yeah, Brad is one of my uh, my my students that loves to sculpt all day in the sculpting room we have a sculpting room you can hang out and just sculpt sculpt i love it let's see so to fix a little triangle like that you can you can use the polish brush to push it down and then just go over it with sculptors pro and it'll clean itself up oh you'll be there and you're doing great awesome awesome Good to hear. I tune in late. Got to go. No worries. No worries. As soon as I got uncomfortable. <laughs> oh, as soon as you got comfortable. I'm like, why did I make you uncomfortable? No. No, it's all good. Yep, I'll be here next week. See you next, uh, see you next Monday, Kimmy. I come from the miniature gaming miniature gaming industry and trust me you're doing a course focusing on sculpting for 3d printing you'd be doing a major boon that is fantastic to hear and you have the best name i've ever seen <laughs> no worries neil thanks for pointing it out i'll i'll, I'll i got you all right <laughs> That's too much information, Kimmy. Too much information. <laughs> no, it's all good. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, 
Yeah, I'm I'm way into 3D printers. I have I have a problem. I've I've been collecting them for some reason. <laughs> I have uh I have two Form Labs printers, a Form 2 and a Form 3 um which I got from a friend of mine that worked at Form Labs. Uh and then that's what that's what's printed most of the stuff back here behind me. And uh I just barely picked up a Saturn 2. Be and the reason why, this is my reasoning, <laughs> other than I just, I'm collecting printers for some reason. Um, the reason why is because most people can't afford a, a Form 2 or, the, or a Form 3, you know, the Form Labs printers. They're, they're mainly used for industrial purposes, you know. Um, so I, I feel like I can't really teach on a Form printer because it's like, it's like teaching on an Apple. Not everybody can afford an Apple or whatever. And they're they're kind of just in their own bubble, right? With their own slicing software, which is phenomenal. It's like top of the line for home printers. But again, not everybody has access access to those. So what I want to do is I bought the Saturn II so I can show the Saturn II because Saturn II is affordable. Um, affordable in in quotes, right? Still kind of kind of expensive, but. Yeah, there's all these 3D printers coming out, like the uh, AnyCubic series and the Elegoo series and all those affordable printers, and it's really bringing the cost down. When I worked at Disney Interactive, we our printer cost $80,000, you know? And um, these these desktop printers are, are printing out the same quality as that printer was. So it's just super duper exciting to me. It feels like a brand new industry is just just popping up you know um and i just want to take advantage of it and i want people to be able to print their own stuff you know when i was a kid i i was into like model railroads and stuff and i always wanted to do like a western town like a like tombstone or something like that you know or like uh back to the future part three i'm a i'm a huge fan of red dead redemption you know all the all the old west stuff and i really wanted to make like a, a little model of it you know mainly I'm more interested in the buildings and stuff like that rather than the, the town itself. Or, or sorry, rather than like the trains. The trains are really cool, don't get me wrong. But think about being able to like come up with your own characters and print them out. Your own little cowboys and your own little, you know, the ladies of the night of the saloon. And, and then like actually coming up with the buildings, like the saloons and all that kind of stuff. It's so cool that you can be, you can do that and print it out. And it's just, it's amazing. It's amazing. Or, you know, come up with your own designs and print them out. Like your own, uh, I don't know, whatever. It doesn't matter. It's just, it's so fun. Is the photon you mentioned? Um, yeah, I'll, I'll show you really quick. Okay. Yeah, I need to adjust this guy's face. It, it's it's kicked back a little too much. I need to push it forward. Okay. Anyway, hey Tattoon, how are you? Once one sec. Let me see if I can go to full screen here for a second. Um, screen. Oh, that just made me go away. Hey. Okay. One sec. One sec. we go see this little baby <laughs> it's so small so small i still have yet to print on it but i've seen prints out of it and it's really uh it's, it's a really really nice printer sorry my microphone's not near me but someone was asking about it and um you know, the, they, they could fit that. You can fit that in your apartment. It's like small. It's smaller than, uh, I don't know, than a microwave, right? It's really tiny. And it doesn't really pump out that much smell. Just put it by a window and open your window and blow, blow the stink out. <laughs> so, do you have one of those armored attacker? Do you have one of those or have you used one before? 
Yeah, it's a little bit bigger than a toaster. Maybe two toasters stacked on top of each other. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, I think I'm going to wrap this up for the day. Um, I'm pretty happy with where he's at right now. And uh, I think I'm just going to keep continue tuning. I need to, there's a lot of stuff I need to push on this guy. So I started with a photon and have three-ish printers now. There you go. <laughs> oh, all right, guys. Um, yeah, I, I stream every Monday at 11 a.m. Pacific time, which is noon mountain time, which is where I'm at. Um, so Epex, because they like hard metal frames. Oh, interesting. Very cool. Yeah, thanks everybody for hanging out with me today. I really, really appreciate it. And again, if you, if you want to grab my user interface and my brushes, I give them away for free. And I really appreciate the feedback on, uh, you know, 3D printing versus game characters. I'm really struggling with, with letting the game character side of it kind of go by the, I mean, I have the training on it and I'll support people if they have questions, but I, I want to kind of focus more on, on the 3D printing side and collectibles and toys and yeah, just kind of, that's my thing, right? That's my thing. So, all right, guys. Thanks again for watching. Have a wonderful day and we will catch you next Monday. All right. Cheers, everybody. Thanks. We'll see ya.